Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'll be taking a look at the Cobra Anti-Armor Specialist, the 1984 Scrap Iron. Now, Scrap Iron makes his first appearance in the old Marvel comic run in issue 43, and makes his first cartoon appearance in the 1984 uh, five-part miniseries the Revenge of Cobra in the very first part. Despite having um, a very interesting sculpt and quite frankly a very um, a very necessary I would say specialty as he is basically the heavy weapons specialist of the Cobra forces and we don't really get something like that until until basically the late 80s so he's pretty much the most heavily armed Cobra there is for quite a while. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem to be um, he doesn't seem to be very well used in either the cartoons or the comic books. He is supposed to be working for um, Destro, uh, according to the uh, back of the of his file card. But quite frankly, uh, a bit later when Destro sort of comes into his own with his own uh, sub team, uh, Scrap Iron seems to be sort of left in the lurch, so to speak. Uh, another interesting thing is that um, prototype pictures of Scrap Iron, like in the um, 1984 catalogs that were printed and put in the boxes of toys for that year, Scrap Iron is actually shown with blue uh, missiles, but he never came with those. He was only issued with these red ones. You will find blue issues of, the, uh, of his missiles, as well as a red missile launcher, in the uh, Battle Gear Accessory Pack number 4. Before I talk about the figure itself, I'd like to take a look at his accessories. First, his uh, personal weapon. A little pistol with the uh, card contents lists as a uh, RAR pistol. It doesn't seem to have any uh, real-world firearm equivalent. At least, I couldn't um, trace its design. However... It's very large and very slab-sided, and it has this bolt sticking out of the side, making me think that it's, it's some type of a machine pistol. And of course, Scrap Iron comes with his missile system. The missile box, and of course it's uh, the rest of the parts, actually come um, apart in the original package. However, it wouldn't be until 1987 that you would get uh, printed instructions on the card back. So you kind of have to figure this out, how to put the thing together yourself. What you do is you take the uh, first two legs with the larger bit in the middle, the second set of legs with the smaller bit, and just sort of plop them down together. Then take this center piece with the larger peg upright and just plop that down. Just press it down firmly. And then take the missile box itself and just pop that in there. And it's actually rather it's actually rather sturdy, considering that this is all just sort of um, friction pegged together. It doesn't really snap together firmly. And you can of course just still swivel the uh, legs around if you so desire. Then there's the remote activator. A very rubbery, um, very rubbery uh, one piece hose. Of course you just put the end bit into the hole here. And you really do have to squeeze this in here in order for it to actually stay in. And finally, you have a pair of red missiles, and they just uh, pop in there. The red missiles themselves are actually kind of rubbery. I believe there are um, there are harder plastic versions of these missiles, but uh, I've got the rubbery versions, and they just go in just like that. I find the um, the end of the remote activator. Uh, 
I guess the, the handle part to be a bit on the thick side. So it's a little hard to actually get it into the figure's hands. But because it's rubbery, I don't really find this to be a, a danger of uh, breaking the thumbs of the figure. Though you still might want to be careful with that. One interesting thing is the um, the missiles, or at least part of the missiles, were actually, um, the mold, were actually reused for the 1985 Ferrets missiles. Part of the missile is right there. And as for the figure himself, oddly enough, he has some reused parts. His entire arm and his lower legs are actually remolded from a 1983 Airborne, of all things. Although the missile system is well designed and actually rather large for the price point that the figure um, was bracketed into, there is one sort of missed opportunity, and that is to make it actually portable. The, uh, the legs actually still pop off because they don't um, permanently snap in, so it probably would have been possible to have put slots onto the uh, um, missile system and have it actually flat and perhaps even mold in a, uh, a handle or even a backpack peg so that scrap iron could carry it around on his back. Another missed opportunity is explaining exactly where Scrap Iron gets that nasty scar on his right cheek. It's very prominent in the artwork and maybe a little subtle on the uh, sculpt of the figure because he does have other wrinkles on his face to compete with the scar. But it's actually rather sad that we don't get an explanation or even a backstory as to how he got that in either the comic books or the cartoons. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Thank you for watching my video, and stay tuned for next week to see another 1980s G.I. Joe toy review. See you then!